What to look forward to on Monday Night Football, <clears throat> how to bet the in season NBA in season tournament tonight, and what to look out for in week 14. All that and more tonight on the Golden Ticket Show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Got killed with the water there. Uh, we are back for another episode of the Golden Ticket Show. My name is Dan with Gotham Gambling. I'm here to bring you all the best bets for the upcoming week, as well as all the action that's going on tonight. Sorry about that. Excuse me. Um, so we're going to go over a quick recap of our Sunday, as well as a full week recap. Um, if you guys followed us yesterday, um, we were hot. That was, we, that was probably one of our best weeks of the NFL that we have had in a while. Yesterday, we went 6-2, and two, including hitting a plus 530 parlay. Uh, our only two misses, we put Ayuk to get 60 yards. He finished at 46 I think that one you could blame a little bit on Debo Samuel going off and the weather conditions were kind of not in Ayuk's type of game. And the other one was Thielen, same thing. I think I think the Mingo connection is finally starting to hit, so that might be something to look at. But I had a big hopes for uh, Thielen there. Um, I talked about it on the show about how the Panther, uh, the, ba the Buccaneers always tend to give up at least 60 or more yards to a receiver. This time it just happened to not be Thielen. We picked the wrong one. It was Mingo, but we hit Colts money line, Pacheco over 66 and a half, Brian Robinson over 40 yards, Mike Evans over 60 yards, Detroit to cover a five point spread and a parlay of Detroit, Indy, LA and Houston, both LA's and Houston all to win, giving us a seven unit day in the NFL for week 13 Sunday. Uh, a recap of our week NCAA basketball. It was not our best week. We were one in four with a minus three unit day. We had a couple bad uh, reads on some of these games. Purdue kind of hurt us, which, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, NBA eight, 12 and one with a minus one unit week. Like I said, the, November was not our month. We were struggling. Um, I think we've kind of found our rhythm towards the end of the month though, but rough, uh, kind of a midweek, a little bit worse than what I wanted. NFL currently, we are eight and five. So where we were six and two, we were two and three on Thursday night. We did not do well in that Cowboys game. So we are up almost seven units and our plays today could potentially put us up close to nine units for the month on NF or for this week on NFL. NCAA, we did a full fade of Mr. Joe Winkle, who is in um, a bit of hell. So if you got him on <laughs> social media reach out that that's a rough one i i'm on his side with that florida state should be in um 100 the way they've played uh premier league we are back betting premier league after the international break we went five and oh this week with a 4.2 unit day we hit some big time plays we hit a big time parlay on sunday to start us off and really just it, it was just a great week for us um, we're, but we're, we're here today. We were currently, we are up four units. We're 22 and 24 on the week up 4.36 units. So I always start my weeks on Tuesday because football ends on Monday night during football season. Once football's over, it kind of, kind of take a week to adjust to the new schedule, but currently we are up 22 and 24 with today's full card, but having the potential to get us um up to about 10 units to end the week so we we're we're i'm ready i'm locked in i'm ready so we're our first bet they we're gonna go ahead and go into ncaa basketball um like i said last on the last show that we had we've been kind of going on low value plays stuff uh you know one or two bets nothing too heavy in the basketball because 
we are hitting a part of the season where a lot of these teams are kind of going back and forth. And hey, Deej, uh, Deej, you still owe me uh, five bucks from the promo I gave last week, by the way. <laughs> um, but so our we have one college basketball play today. It is Arkansas minus 12 and a half. They this this Arkansas team is literally the proof last week of why I say do not bet. Um, don't like be careful what you bet because college basketball is the biggest upset sport in any of the uh, major college uh, sports that get followed all over across the media because you have a lot of these teams that are not good on the road. They're having to travel a lot, and a lot of these younger teams are not used to traveling a lot. And this was proof of it. And this is what I was saying, because you had teams like Wilmington going into Kentucky and winning. Arkansas beat Duke. Georgia Tech beat a team. Um, there was like, t- I think, nine upsets last week or this weekend, um, which is why, like I said, like we, we saw Purdue go down in overtime. We saw a couple of these teams have to scrape out a win in very ugly games. So, But I like Arkansas minus 12 and a half today. They're facing off against Furman. Um, their matchup versus Duke just shows how hard it is to play in Arkansas um, going into that arena. They were dominant the whole game. And this Furman team, I just don't see them being able to cover on the road. They have not been the best road team to start this year. There hasn't been a lot of data against good teams to really – prove that but i think our arkansas is too hyped up they they want to prove that it wasn't just a one-time thing and they're going to try to keep this momentum going i think they're going to win by double digits if you want to take it down to about 10 if you want to just do that i think it's around minus 170 180 last i looked so that's also worth taking a taking a unit maybe a unit and a half on if it's in the 200s but i like the minus 12 and a half i think that's a great play so we're rocking with that one, Arkansas minus 12 and a half. Um, our, and that, that's our only basketball play today. We have, we're have we starting to dabble a little bit more into the um, NHL ranks because I've been really wanting to bet NHL for the last couple um, years and just haven't really um, had anything that – I, being where I've, I grew up wasn't a big hockey area, so there wasn't a lot to kind of go around to show me, um, you know, what to look at and stuff. So I'm still going to do a little bit of my research on that. But our NHL play today is we have the Dallas Stars money line. I really like the value on this play. The Stars are 8-2-2 two and two on the road this year, um, going into a matchup that should be a matchup of two potential playoff teams. But the big thing is the Lightning – at home this year have not been the best. They're just above 500 at home. And that's definitely something you really have to be worried about. I think last time I checked their record, I'm about to recheck it right now. I think it was like five, five and two at home. Let me see. And see, this was minus one Oh five when I took it uh, for Dallas. Now it's minus minus one fifteen. So I think the odds are kind of, swaying back towards swaying back towards the um towards the stars i think it might have been just like one of those like based on their last game how did they do um these two teams played each other two days ago and dallas won eight to one i i like I said, this this is a home and home series. I just now noticed. I actually didn't even notice it earlier when I looked at it. I was just looking at their stats um, long term. But yeah, this this team got dominated eight to one in their last game against each other. So that's just that right there just shows how dominant Dallas is going to be. Um, that one was at home, and now they're having to travel back off that. I think this will be a closer game than the last one but i definitely think that this game will come down to um power plays and i think the stars are going to be dominant enough to take them down so i love this is a pick spot um if you're into arbitrating arbitrate betting um i talked about it before on the show this is a perfect example of arbitrage betting um and let me show you why 
as I'm going to pull this screen up. So you look right here. We have – these are the lines. This is the, how they face each other the last five games, right? So we're going to go back. Look, these are all their lines. If you took the 60-minute money line for either team, it is plus money. So if you took Tampa, it's plus 145. If you take Dallas, it's plus 121. So no matter how much you bet on each team, you will get um, a profit back. So, I mean, obvi and obviously it depends on your books. If we look here, you know, you can get the best line you can get excluding overtime. Both of them are going to be on Caesars. So if you bet, you know, 10 bucks on each, if you bet a hundred bucks on each of these, you'll finish with either a $21 profit or a $45 profit. That's the best way to look at this. So if you're, I use these as sort of like a, like a low arbitrage builders. So where it's a game where I, I don't think this game will go to overtime. So I'm willing to risk the money for it to go on overtime to slowly build up my bankroll a couple dollars. So that's where that one comes into play. Um, but we're going to go ahead and lock that one in stars money line. And we're, so we're going to hit the ad break here in just one second. Uh, but coming up next is we're going to go over the NBA in season tournament, our best bets. And we're going to go over everyone here at for frequency sakes bracket for the in season tournament coming up after the break. My name's Ryan Allison. I've spent over a decade immersed in the art of tattooing. Sharply honing my skills has materialized into a diverse and prestigious body of work. Each tattoo reflects my relentless pursuit of excellence, and every client I work with is a living embodiment of that unwavering commitment. I will gladly and wholeheartedly embrace your distinct vision. Now, so we are going to go over all the best bets and a quick preview of the in-season tournament. So I'm pulling up a bracket of it right now for you guys. So uh, let me know in the comments who you who do you guys think is going to win the tournament. Let 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 me know. Give me your give me your takes for the tournament. Let's see what we um you know what we can get into from everyone. So we're looking at the bracket here. And so you got Celtics, Pacers, Pelicans, Kings tonight. I think these are going to, I think this is a great way to start off the tournament because these are two really good matchup teams. The Celtics tend to play however their opponent plays. So if their opponent is, you know, trying to play lockdown defense, they will play lockdown defense and they will be, they'll grind out a low scoring game. If you want to push the pace and try to put up 200 points, they will match you and they will try to put up 200 points. So I really like this game. Um, looking at the bets for it, we have two that I really, really like um, for this one. And it's mainly I have I have a – it's a lean because this this team can kind of score randomly and drop and drop these spreads really fast. But – I'm taking the Celtics minus five as a lean. So about half a unit play on this one. Um, I wouldn't go a full unit unless you're super confident in this team, but without Porzingis, they're missing a little bit of their um, interior height, which shouldn't be an issue, but you always love to have that on a team that really only has one big man in miles Turner um, with Al Horford being the only big man and him being as old as he is, it kind of limits their, I don't want to say limits their uh, offensive ability, but it gives them a little bit more wiggle room to lean off him to focus on Tatum. So I that's why I said it's a lean. I still like it. Um, I want to see how these numbers move. It's the when I got the spread, it was two thirty four. It's kicked up to two forty four. I you could take that if you want. That would also be one that I wouldn't put a lot on. But this this Pacers team without Halliburton got beat by the Celtics 155 to 105. The which I you know even projecting those numbers I could see this be like the only thing that limits is now 
they have their for sure scorer that'll put up 25 to 30 points a game, which could lower both te- lower the Celtics numbers and make this a little bit closer. But with him in, what's the difference in the game plan? Because you have four guards that can guard him between Tatum, Brown, Derek White, and Holiday. And you have, which is going to force Bruce Brown, Matherin, and Obi Toppin to play well. I don't think they have what it takes. But because this team has the most random scores every single night, I'm going to simply just hold out and take the lean here. Like I said, I like the spread, but not for a full unit. I'm taking it a half a unit. If you want to take the over, I would take. Sorry, sorry about that, folks. That was uh, that was weird. My my computer just glitched out for like the second time in the last two shows. So I apologize about that. But yeah, I would take that lean. Um, the other bet I would take in this game, I want to see what the line is at now. Um, I'm also looking real quick for the over 245 and a half. The Celtics have not hit that. Have only hit that in one game this year, but it was against the Pacers. So I could see why they, this team is not, they're putting up close to that number, but most of the time they're around like the 225 to 230 mark. So I just would stay away from that one because you never know what's going to actually happen. But another one I really like is going to be Jason Tatum to get over. um, I think when I caught it, it was at eight and a half. But it could be. I think it's went up since to closer towards nine. It's at... Either eight and a half or nine. If it's at like that, it's a line that I like, but it has some potential to not hit. If they, if they real, this team is one of those teams that they just play off what works best. And if what works best is Tatum leaking out and someone else crashing, they will let that happen. But Tatum in playoff situations, we can't really say it's a playoff game, but it's a play, it's a a tournament game, a, a game with implications usually goes all out 24 seven. So I like him getting the rebounds. Um, if you don't want to take him getting 10, um, you could easily take him getting eight and that's at like minus two seventy. So you could put that with something like Tatum to get 20 points or like Celtics to cover like, or like Celtics to cover like a minus one and a half spread to win by two or some, something like that. That's like super low odds. That'll jump it down about, to closer to like a 150, 160, um, makes it easier to hit. But those are the two plays I really love for that game. And now this is the game I'm most excited about. I love this spread. I still don't understand why this spread is, you know, this high. The Pelicans are a plus four and a half underdog to the Kings. And I really do not understand this line whatsoever. I mean, this Kings team has lost back-to-back games against the Pelicans pretty badly too. Not even in a you know close enough justifiable way. Like they they got beat with both of these games. There was no CJ McCollum. They got beat one twenty nine to ninety three, and they got beat one seventeen one twelve. And if you look at the play by play. It what there wasn't a lot. There wasn't much of anything to, you know, kind of kind of go over. So there's, I I like I just don't understand this line. I'm looking at their last five, and the only real difference I can see is that the Kings beat Denver, and Chicago lost to, or Chicago beat New Orleans. That's the only thing I can see is because they beat. Denver, I think their line's kind of riding high. They're not on like a crazy winning streak. They got cooked by the Clippers. They got scapegoated by the Warriors. They beat the Timberwolves with no Edwards. And then they lost to the Pelicans was their last game. And then if you look at the Pelicans, they struggled a couple games. They beat two teams that were kind of hurt and then lost. So I could see maybe why, but I like the Pelicans here. It's a good bounce back spot. You have CJ McCollum back. You have Herbert Jones, you have Trey Murphy back, you have your full lineup back. 
And the Pelicans won both of these lineups without their full lineup in, which this is going to give them obviously a bigger advantage. I don't know. I think it's dropped down to three and a half, but I I would take this all the way to, you know, if they were minus two and a half, I have them at minus one and a half in my projections. And I really love this spot for the Pelicans because their defense and physicality is something that the Kings just can't keep up with. They don't have anyone to stay with Ingram. They don't have anyone strong enough to be able to guard Zion. And while McCollum and Fox is a decent matchup on its own, Valanchunas has been hot, and Valanchunas has torn up this Kings team because they have to focus on Zion, and he's leaving open. So that's something you got to watch out for. And so I, that's why I, I think the Pelicans just outnumber them. The only way I see this happening is if the Kings just get hot and the Pelicans can't keep up, which is a possibility. But I'm rocking with the Pelicans here. I'm rocking with New Orleans against Sacramento and advancing to the next round. And so there is another prop. There's two more props I like for this one. I like Valanchunas is over on rebounds. Um, if I'm looking at it now. His over on rebounds is, I wish I had this up earlier. His over on rebounds is nine and a half. He has gotten 10 rebounds and I think it's like four consecutive games. I think I know we put him in our, uh, our big double, double parlay and it cashed. Um, so here it is. Last five games. Let me share the screen for you all. Last five games, he's hit this in three of the five. The only two he didn't was game one against this uh, Magic team that I think that was just a very weird game, or against the Jazz. Uh, but he bounced back great. And then against Philly, who without Embiid were just kind of put throwing dogs at him. But if you look, when he plays teams that have a lot of height, he does well. So you got San uh, San Antonio who give up a lot of rebounds. You have Chicago that give up a lot of rebounds. These two teams rarely give up big rebound games to centers. These two teams give up a lot of rebounds to centers. With that being said, you can even look look, Sacramento. They give up about 11.6 rebounds per game to centers. And head-to-head this year, 13-11. And even going back all the way to 2021 when uh, when he played with them um, last year. No, not even that, the year before. I don't think he played any of their matchups the, uh, last year against them, except the last two of the season. But look, 13, 11, 14, 12, 18 uh, point blowout. So that's obviously why he wasn't getting in on that one. 13, 11. He's cashing this line every single time. I don't understand why it's so low. Give me uh, Mr. Valanchunas with at least 10 boards tonight. I also, if you, but if you don't even want to do that, I like him getting a double double. The odds on him getting a double double, I caught it at 130. It's at 128 right now. I still think it's a viable play. He would be in our double double parlay if it was for the fact that we don't have enough games to justify putting a double double parlay together. And I don't like anything other than Halliburton in the second game to get a double double and with the this is the first kind of playoff situation he's been in so i don't want to touch that and i want to see how he does first so we have that and so those are our plays for the first night of the end season tournament um i do want to go over the what i think are so uh, we're going to go – I think I want to go over everyone's bracket as well as mine on what everyone thinks is going to happen. Let me see if I can find a way to share the screen to you all. Okay, so here is my bracket right here. We have it. Um, This is – this is what I'm going with. I'm very confident in this one. Um, and if you want more NBA action, more NBA talk, uh, real quick before we go into the dive of this, um, our man Sam is doing his uh, points in the paint episode tonight. I'm pretty. Uh, he's probably going to go over everything, go over the late game, and just talk about what's been going on in the NBA for the last week or two. 
So make sure you guys tune in for that at eight Eastern. Um, I would, I'm, I'm definitely tuned in for that. I think it's going to be a fun uh, show to watch. I'm really excited for this tournament. Um, so make sure you guys tune into that as well as over here. We got, like I said, we have a lot, I've said every show, we have a lot of great content. It's out every single, almost every single day. And we're trying to get some stuff and we try to get as best stuff out as we can for you guys. So make sure you guys tune in, subscribe. Um, so my bracket, so let me go through my thought process here. So obviously we just talked about, I think the Kings, um, kind of got lucky. If you looked at a lot of their, um, they were playing a couple of these teams that just didn't have, um, like there were injuries, there were like back to backs with it. Like it was just stuff that, um, there was too many situations that put them in this position to have a top spot. So that's why I'm rocking with the Pelicans here. I think the Pelicans will win this. I think with a couple of days of rest, Durant will be available tonight or tomorrow night. And I, the way the Lakers have been playing, I just don't see them beating um, the Suns team the way the Suns have been playing the last couple of games. So we're, I'm obviously going to feed into that, bite into that, and I'm taking the Suns here. Um, as well as when these two teams match up, like I said, I think the Suns are legit. They've been playing really well, so I'm going to tail them again. And we're going to take them in the uh, in the semifinals to beat New Orleans. I think just the way they play, they can probably they can lock down Ingram enough where Zion's not going to matter as much, and they can – Durant and Booker and Eric Gordon should be able to take that team out. We could potentially see Beal back. That would be a good addition. But between those two, I like their odds. And over here on the East, now the Celtics got put in a division with probably the some of the best teams. And so they weren't able to come out strong, but they managed to make it with some, some cheap play at the end there. Um, so, but I think they take out the Pacers tonight. I think they have too much experience in these type of sim, uh, situations, and they have uh, too their bench is too deep to and too good to match up with the Pacers. So I'm taking that. I don't know how I feel with this one, but I like the Bucks because the Knicks have been Knicks always show up in situations like this where you think they they don't have a shot. Um, but I think. As much as a lot of people say it's the end season tournament doesn't really mean anything. If the Bucks lose in the first round of this, then a lot of people are going to be asking the questions of can they perform in the playoffs? Can they do this? Everyone on their team's healthy. I think they'll be a good to, they'll be good to go. I think with the the ability of Lopez in the three point range, it's going to stretch Mitchell Robinson out enough that either Lopez is going to have a great night or Giannis is going to have a great night. So I really like that. Um, we do have a couple bets for that that will be coming out tomorrow, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Um, but I think the Bucks take this one with ease. Celtics Bucks, we could potentially see a Drew Holiday revenge game. I just don't see any way the Bucks are going to be. They could beat the Knicks. I don't think they could beat the Celtics. And I have the Celtics winning it all. Same thing. They're just too deep. They're too good. It, it would take a really bad shooting night from Tatum and Brown for them to lose. I think, I think the tournament is theirs and they're going to win it. That's how I'm, I'm going. We are going with my man, Doug. So Doug, I'm, I'm curious his thought process here. Cause I, um, I know he's a bulls fan. So I'm surprised he has the bucks going all the way. Um, but I mean, obviously me and him have the same idea towards this, um, uh, the Celtics game he's got in the Bucks. Um, he has the Bucks beating the Celtics, though. I'm curious if he thinks this might be like Giannis or Damian Lillard going off or what, what that situation is going to be like. We obviously have the Sun. Now, I'm, I'm curious with the Kings over the Pelicans, his thought process with that one. But Kings beating the Suns is I, – I wonder if he was going for a wow factor there. So that's that's interesting to me, but – Kings when the whole thing is a, I think it's like plus like 4,000 or something. So if you want something to really root for, for an underdog, that's kind of an overdog, then um, I would take that one. In the words of Mr. Joe Winkle, I'm rooting for chaos was what he told me when he sent me the screenshot of his bracket. As you can see, look, Kings take Kings and the Pacers 
fine. He's got everything but upsets except for the Suns, Lakers in the first round, and the Kings to beat the Pelicans. Um, he's got the Kings beating the Pacers. Maybe, maybe he wants to see a Halliburton and Sabonis revenge of the trade kind of thing. I don't know, but I a very chaotic bracket. I like that. I love it. I'm I'm for it, Joe. And Sam's bracket. So Sam Sam's with me on the Pelicans. I know he he really he likes the Lakers in this matchup. So that's that's interesting to see. Um, he's got the Pelicans beating the Lakers, though. I do agree. If the Lakers can get past the Suns, I don't think they'll get past the Pel either the Pelicans or the Kings. So I do uh, agree with him there. Um, he's like me. He's with me. He's got Boston winning it all. He just has a different team in the West. Um, that's the only thing I think different we have is he has um, the Pelicans making it to the finals and the Lakers beating uh, the Suns in the first round. So, but I like it. I think it's a, I think it's a good bracket. I think we all have some good brackets. So once again, that is Sam and I have the Celtics winning. The and Doug and Joe have the wrong brackets. They have the Kings winning. So <laughs> that's that's how everyone is going with their brackets today uh, for today's to start today's matchup for the in season tournament. Um, that will be it for our NBA segment. We will have some more stuff coming out on our Twitter page, Gotham Gambling. So make sure you guys stay tuned in for that. That will be coming up soon. We're coming up after the break. We will be breaking down the week 14 slate for you early. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Durham Remodeling has been serving the Quad Cities area since 1973. And with over 50 years of excellence on their track record, you'll see why it's so easy to trust their experts when it comes to all of your home improvement projects. This family-owned business has you covered on all your needs. Protect your home or building from the elements today and get great roof repair services. Need new windows? No problem. Durham Remodeling can upgrade your windows and doors. Whether you want to upgrade the little details in your home or office or want to tear a room down and start fresh, the expert contractors at Durham Remodeling have your back. Even the smallest changes can completely transform your space. Ready to start entertaining your friends for backyard barbecues? Durham Remodeling will help you plan, design, and build your deck and patio for the perfect outdoor space. Durham Remodeling's work is 100% guaranteed, so you can rest assured that you're getting the best service around. Call 309-786-6715 today for your free estimate for all your roofing, siding, flooring, windows, and painting needs. That's Durham Remodeling, 309-786-6715. And we are back. So, apologize. We're getting our full card posted out on Twitter right now. Make sure you guys tune in at Gotham Gambling on X, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Um, but we do have uh, we have some we have some NFL action that um, you know, I'm excited after this last week. We got really good this week. Um, if you remember from our show last week. We had three plays that we absolutely loved that we took early on and they all cashed. We had the Chargers at minus three and a half. It jumped up to a six and a half and it cashed at minus three. If you had the six and a half, that was a bad beat. Apparently both teams forgot how to play football and it was a, it was one of the most boring games I've ever seen in my life. Um, we had the Cardinal Steelers under 40. We got saved by some rain out in the uh out in Pittsburgh um really made that game kind of uh perfect for an under um we saw James Conner go off we saw Najee Harris and Jalen Warren have a great game even though we saw Pickett go down um so that's that's gonna be something we'll talk about a little bit later and we had the Lions minus four and a half they covered that four and a half spread just barely they had me really confident and they scared the living crap out of me the minute I um, I turned that game off, went to another one, and saw the uh, what the score was. So that is something that um, that's something that we're really 
really lucky for that we did not get a like a bad beat of a lifetime with something with that team, you know, kind of just getting smacked after going up 21 nothing in the first 10 minutes. So we have the plays I love um, that we're already taking that we've already put in. Uh, the first, uh, we're going to start with the 1 p.m. slate. The first one I have is Detroit, Chicago over 45 and a half. Now, this one has, I, the best way I could put this one is this one makes me a bit nervous because as I've seen, um, there's a trend. If you go to, um, there's like NFL Pout Team Rankings website, teams after the buy on the road are like, two and nine in favor of the under like they they just have not played well um in that game maybe not i don't want to say maybe not played well but they're just their defense is kind of picked back up maybe it was a good time for them to reset on defense but this is the chicago bears we're talking about this isn't like a you know some some team like the like the bills or the eagles that need like a reset week and they're going to come off it strong this is the Chicago Bears. They went over on this game just two weeks ago when they played each other. And the Lions, ever since their bye week, have had a total of 50 and more every single time. So I really love the 45. Um, you know, the weather might be an issue. I'm about to actually look up the weather out there for that because that is going to be important. You know, we... I might change my mind on that. We might switch to an under. We're around um cuz the weather on Sunday it's going to be rainy and with some sleet and some snow. So we could potentially see a under, but the big thing is is the fact that um their run game is dominant. This isn't like the Bears run game where we don't know who's running the ball. They kind of are going in and out, haven't had the best running game. This uh, this Detroit team is solid on their run game, and if they're not going deep, they're going to probably throw a lot of short passes, which is going to be great for Amon Ra and great for like Jamison Williams and Josh Reynolds, I think, might get a couple, you know, even chances as a running back this week. So that's something to look at. I would. I think they could score almost forty by themselves. I would watch this line. If you see this line start to go down in the next day or so, I would take the under then, and I would probably switch my bet. But right now, I'm going with the over, um, for the Bears Lions game because they went over a couple weeks ago, and the Bears suck. The next one I have is the Ravens minus seven. I, I only put a half a unit on this one. Because the Ravens are coming off a of bye week. We just talked about unders, seven point score, seven point spread, and under is kind of worrisome. But the Ravens have been really good. Coming off a of bye week against a Rams team that had a great outing against a top tier defense. But the difference is, is the offense of that of the Browns was so was so bad that they didn't really have to worry about, you know, how do we match up with this team? How do, what, do, what do we do to keep pace with this team? They didn't have to worry about that. But this Ravens team, they do. Um, Lamar Jackson should be able to pick apart this defense. Their line has been a lot stronger this year. So we are not going to see – we might not see, you know, a lot of worrisome with Aaron Donald coming through. I mean, obviously he's going to get through as much as he can, and he's going to get through a lot. But um, Lamar's getting the ball out a lot quicker. They're playing a lot better. Um, they didn't really have a lot to go over and fix during their uh, their bye week. So I, I'm really curious to see what they're going to do going into this um, this week and how they're going to play the rest of the season with the first uh, currently tied for first place right now. Um, the next one, I have Colts money line. You can take the two and a half if you want. Right now it's at two and a half. You can take that if you want, but I am going to take the money line. For that game against the Bengals, I understand why this spread is where it's at because the Bengals haven't played Zach. Uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Browning could come out and have like one of the greatest games we've ever seen, and the spread's going to jack up the other way. 
But I don't understand why the spread is two and a half right now for a Bengals team that doesn't have a quarterback. Yes, he has a lot of weapons, but they don't really use it. They're going to rely on the run game against a team that has a great run defense, and they're going to be going to face pretty soon next week a – let me see if I can find where the Colts rank. Um, they go up against this Colts defense that kind of got pulled apart last week um, by the um, – we got kind of pulled apart by the Titans. Derrick Henry played great. They give up about 129 rushing yards a game, and they've given up 15 rushing yard touchdowns this season. But I don't think Mixon is going to be able to do this by himself. I think the Colts – kind of had a scare last week they shouldn't have, and they know how badly they need to win this game, knowing that this could potentially be the tiebreaker between them and Houston for that last wild card spot. So they're going to come out hard, and they're going to come out trying to win. So I, I'm taking their money line right now. I want to see what the spread does. If the spread doesn't move one way or the other, I would take the two and a half. But by, I would say, by... I would say by Wednesday, if this spread has moved like maybe a point or two, then I would use your best judgment. Um, but yeah, I, I really like that uh, money line. I did half a unit on it again. I always I always do low unit to start the week because you don't want to put too much, and then all of a sudden the injury report comes out, and then you're you know having to cash out and get like two cents back after you put in like ten twenty dollars. So I always take that. Um, the games I'm not touching in the one o'clock window. Um, I'm not going to touch Texans jets because I just betting on the jets and the Texans just makes me sad. Um, I'm not going to touch the Patriots Steeler on Thursday night. I do have a play. I like for it. I think if you wanted to bet anything, I took the under at 33 yesterday. It's already down to 30. This line started at 41 last week. It's already down in the almost at, 29 points i think that can hit but i just wouldn't take it like like why like why are you putting yourself through that on a thursday night watching i I, that's why i'm glad we have a big nba oh no that's right there's no nba games thursday either so we are subjected to a thursday night of steelers and patriots with nothing else to watch but hockey and like maybe maybe there's a good college game there's only one college basketball game on that day. That's going to be worth watching. And it's um, Iowa versus Iowa State. That's it. There, There's no other big matchups. It's like like the only other matchup I see right now is Rust College versus North Alabama. And I don't think anyone wants to watch that one. So Thursday is going to be a very tough day <laughs> for, for sports fans. Um. Four o'clock games, I'm not touching anything. I'm kind of waiting and seeing how Jaguars, Browns, I'm going to wait and see because I just minus three feels really low for a game where it's a a practice squad quarterback in the Jaguars, but Trevor Lawrence has just not looked the best this year. So I think I'm just going to wait and see. The over-under is 36. And I, if I took anything, it would be Jaguars money line. It's at one fifty two right now is the best odd, but I would just wait. Um, like I said, Colts Bengals should be an easy one. The four o'clock games, I've the you could take the 49ers on the spread right now. It's ten. It'll probably get up closer to thirteen or fourteen. But at that point, I would just take the money line and I would put it with something like. like the like the Texans to win or the do like like the the Niners and the like the Niners and the like the Dolphins to win on Monday night so, something like something that you could just lower the odds and just bite the bullet if you wanted to bet it I am seeing something I'm curious about and that is the Broncos game I actually might go ahead and take this one at um half a unit right now on the Broncos on the spread because why are they plus three right now? 
to the Chargers. The Chargers don't have a good passing defense. They do not. They have not played well. They just barely clung to life against a um, against a Chargers team that has not played well, or the, it's a Patriots team that just has not played well. I, I don't understand that what at all. So I'm I'm gonna go ahead and take that plus three right there. Chiefs Bills. I'm just gonna enjoy the game. Eagles Cowboys. I'm just gonna enjoy the game. Um, and then. We have two Monday night games next week. We have the Dolphins, Titans, and the Giants, Packers. I don't like either of those games. I think if you had to take something, you could probably take Packers minus six. Um, or you could even take Dolphins minus 13 and a half right now. But other than that, there's not really a lot. So um, that's what we have right now. We're going to go to our last ad break. Um, and then we're going to talk tonight's games what we like, and what we got coming up the rest of this week. For frequency's sake, has you covered on all things sports. From the squared circle to the hardwood and the gridiron to the speedway, we've got something for everyone. Walk down the aisle with the boys from Card Subject to Change every Sunday as they take a deep dive into everything pro wrestling. Need your gambling fix? We've got you there. Enter Pit Row with Rod Gomez and Fast Money as we win the checkered flag with NASCAR, Xfinity, and truck race winners and props. Football more your style? Explore the waters of NFL DFS with DFS Deep Dive with Brian Craighead and Jordan Kernan each week. More into the science portion of the game? We've got a double dose of action there. The Professor John Bush and Dennis Michelson take you into their science lab and dissect your week in the data lab. Want an analytical take? Nick Girl and the team at Gridiron AI come to you each week with The Lab. Need to know who to start last minute? The network's flagship show, for fantasy's sake, is here in a pinch. The fellows come to you live every football Sunday from 10 to 11.30 Central with the week's best DFS, gambling, and lineup advice. And wrap up your Sundays with Joe Winkle and Nick Brinks as they come to you live with educated ignorance looking at all the day's action. Can't get enough of Joe? He comes to you three times a week. Not enough football on Sunday? Not a problem. Kick your feet up at lunch on Monday and slip on into the football lounge with Mark and Dan while they look at the week that was in news, notes, and more. For frequency's sake, you know what we mean. Can't get enough of Joe. Ain't, ain't that the truth? We we can never get enough. And uh, it's crazy how Joe's become one of my best buddies now. And it's been less than 13 weeks into the season. And now <laughs> me and Joe are just arguing like we've been friends for 20 years. And I love it. Um, so last thing we're going to go over tonight is Monday night football. Now I told y'all the, a couple weeks ago, I don't like primetime games because it just feels like there's too much pressure and too much analysis of what's going on. That lines get read a lot sharper than normal. But if you find stuff early in the morning, it's great. Um, for example, we, so can the Bengals keep this game close is the big thing I'm looking at this week because I they played Kenny Pickett and the Steelers and while they went for 400 yards they only scored like 17 points I think right against in a in a freaking yeah they scored they got 400 yards but they scored 16 points so they clearly they were getting it down there but they weren't scoring and so I think that um, is that a testament of the defense or is that just how poor this offense is? Um, but my first play of the day that I really like um, is going to be Christian Kirk over 49 and a half receiving yards, putting a unit on that one. Kirk has went over this line just about every game. The Bengals play one of the uh, most strict man defense play styles in the NFL Kirk has feasted on this all season. So I like Christian Kirk to go over this line. Uh, a guy I've been following a lot, Mr. Picks pro over on Twitter. Make sure you guys check him out. He's in the middle of a heater right now. Um, he, um, he just, he's been on a roll and I, I just I love watching what he's doing. Um, he I got this line from him, uh, so make sure you guys go check him out. The other one we have is going to be um, Ridley anytime touchdown. So there's a reason why I picked this line, and I will I'm going to pull it up right now. 
for you guys. And I'm going to show you why I love this. So if I can find him here. God, why do they always put these guys so far down? There he is. It's not in alphabetical order either. That's the weird thing. So, okay, so for him to get a touchdown right now, look, now he he's only – he's gotten – in the last two weeks he's gotten one. He went five straight weeks without one. He's only got five on the season. But there's a reason I picked this, and that is this. Look, so he is the third most target rate of any player on this team right now. But in the red zone, he has the highest target rate. When they're in the red zone, he has double the amount that Christian Kirk has and triple the almost quadruple the amount that Ingram has. Ridley is their red zone threat. I think Kirk is their guy to get them down there to get the big plays. And Ridley is the guy that catches it in the end zone for him. Now, the big difference is look, versus the amount of targets that we have for the red zone. We look, we got 18, 23, 26, 28. There's 31 passing attempt target passing targets. The red zone rushing attempts alone has went over this just between look 34, 39, 42, 44, 45. Now this team, they don't the Bengals don't give up a lot of touchdowns in the red zone to wide receivers. They've only given up just under one a game, but they're giving up about three touchdowns, a little under three touchdowns a game. I think that with Etienne not being 100%, they're going to they're going to try to force them to throw this ball in the red zone. I think Ridley is due for one. I think he keeps this touchdown streak going. He goes three straight games, and I really love that right there. Um, and then our final play today is going to be we we've been we've done a parlay of the day every day, um, except for I think one because there just wasn't enough games to justify making one, and I couldn't find a good one. But we are three and zero for the month of December on plays of the day. And normally they're about like plus, we had a plus 110. We had a, we had a couple, we had a plus 500 and a plus 300. Today's is a minus 145 because there's not a lot of volume, but we have a nice little two-legger. It is Trevor Lawrence, 200 yards, Jason Tatum to get eight rebounds. That is our, you know, play of the, that's our play of the day. Um, honestly, I think that's a lock. Um, that, that should be easy. Lawrence should get 200 before the third quarter. Tatum getting eight rebounds in a close game is pretty much a lock. So those are our three plays today um, for tonight's game. Another one, last one's kind of like a mixed parlay. But that's what we liked. Once again, um, we're going to go – we have our whole card posted on Twitter, so if you guys want to tell that, games are starting in about 10 minutes. So make sure you guys lock those in. But we're going to go over our card one more time. And I'm just going to pull it up for you guys. Our full card right over here. We have the Dallas Stars money line at minus 110. We have Boston minus five. As you see right here, half a unit. It's a lean. Not doing a lot on this one, but I do like the play. Our parlay of Lawrence, 200 yards. Tatum, eight rebounds at minus 145. We actually had Arkansas at 11 and a half, not 12 and a half. I think that line is actually still at. 11 and a half, but I will check that. Yeah, it's still at 11 and a half. I don't know where I got 12 and a half from. Um, so 11 and a half for Arkansas. We have the Pelicans plus four, Valanchunas double double, and Calvin uh, Christian Kirk over 49 and a half receiving yards, and Calvin really anytime touchdown. And as you see right here, here is our four future bets for this upcoming week. We have the over 45 in Detroit, Chicago. Indy to win, beat the Bengals, Baltimore minus seven, and Denver plus three. Put a half unit. I'm a, I actually put about 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7 units. I think I just clicked these too quick, so I'm going to adjust those later on tonight. But that is our card for the day. That is our best bets for the day, and that is our week in uh, week ahead. So make sure you guys check in tonight with Educated Ignorance with Joe. They're going to do a breakdown of the game. And just talk about everything going on in the NFL from the last couple of days. We might get another therapy session for Florida State. So if you're if you're ready for that, you're ready for that one. Just be prepared. Um, but that is our that's our card for the day. That's what we got for today. 
I'm very I'm very excited about tonight. I think tonight's gonna be a great game. We haven't had NBA in like two nights, so I didn't want to overbet it because I knew I was gonna go crazy. So I stayed away. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned on our Twitter because um, if I can find something, we're gonna post a lotto play for the ten o'clock game tonight for that uh, New Orleans game. So make sure you guys stay tuned because that will be going out probably in the next thirty minutes. Um, once again, my name is Dan Hancock with Gotham Gambling, uh, the Golden Ticket Show at For Frequency Sake Network. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.